Welcome back to Fool Us. Now, we like to think that it's a show that not only entertains, but makes you think. You can relax, however. You don't have to do too much thinking because Penn and Teller do all the heavy lifting for us. While they limbo up, let's make our next contender. I'm Joshua J, and I'm from Ohio. We are as crazy about magic as I am. You see everything through the lens of magic. Everything that I do, everything that I read, everything that I watch is fodder for magic tricks. The thing I love about magic is the same thing that I love about movies. So many different ways to tell a story. Alfred Hitchcock, Stephen King, many others. These people are great storytellers, and they would make great magicians. I like to try and transport the audience. I want to take them into my story and then give them this magical payoff. I feel like magic is like a game of chess between the magician and the audience. And Den Game is pure entertainment, pure astonishment. To see something incredible, that's what you go for. All-time magic great, Mr. Lance Burton, instead of this next performer, this kid is going places. Well, we're thrilled our stage is one of those places with a randomly selected member of our audience to help him. Will you please welcome Joshua J. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's an honor to be performing here for Penn and Teller and for all of you. And it's a challenge, right, to try and fool these guys, Penn and Teller, but not as challenging as the last show I did. I was trying to fool a seven-year-old girl. <laughs> she, this girl came up to me, she wanted to see a trick, and I realized she was blind. And I thought, that's a really powerful moment, and it is a challenge, because magic is visual. It's for the eyes. If I were going to fool her, I'd have to fool her mind. So I'm going to show you what I showed her uh, with your help. Now, I can't have you pick a card if you couldn't see because you wouldn't know which card you picked. Even if I could get your hand to the deck and have you pick a card out, you wouldn't know which one you were looking at. So I've got a better way. Hold out your hand and put your other hand on top. 52 possibilities between your hands. I want you to do it like this. First, think of the number. Do you have a number? Yeah. And now I want you to think of a suit. Okay. Now you have a card, a number and a suit. And this is perfect because he knows the card in his head, but of course Penn and Teller don't know it and none of you know it. And you all need to know the card. Now if you whispered the card, you'd accuse me of listening. So I've got a perfect way for Todd the, to code the card to all of you. And you'll be, you will know the card, but I won't. Here's how it works. I'll blindfold myself and I'll turn away. And when I do, what I'd like you to do, Todd, is I want you to deal the value of your card in a face-down pile. So we'll get a close-up in a second on Todd's hands. And if you thought of three, you'll go one, two, three, one by one, and put the deck on top when you're done. Deal as quietly as you can so you don't think I'm listening. I will turn away. The audience will tell me when you're done. Go ahead and go. Deal that value of your card in a face-down pile. And when you're done... Put the deck on top. When it's done, ah, all of you know the value of your card, except for me, which is great, but you need to know the suit. So I'll turn away again, and I want you to deal the value or the suit of your card like this. If you're thinking of clubs, deal one down and put the deck on top. If you were thinking of hearts, do two cards, one by one, deck on top. Spades would be three, diamonds would be four. Audience will tell me when you're done. Oh. Applause for dealing. I like this crowd. Okay. Now, the question is, how can I find this card? Because it's a perfect situation, right? Todd thought of a card. He never had to take it out of the deck, never had to show it around, never had to mention it. But now, how can I find a card for somebody's mind? And I'll tell you how. I'm going to go by feel. I'm going to try and feel for that card, go by a feeling that I get. Todd, you didn't leave, did you? No, nope, I'm still in it. <laughs> That's good. I'm gonna go, ooh, ooh. I'm getting a feeling on this card. Todd, did you by any chance pick? 
the four of diamonds. That I did. <laughs> Is this card by any chance the four of diamonds? <laughs> Thank you. But I said that this was a trick, not for the eyes, but for the mind. You see, there is no deck of cards. This is completely for our mind. Oh, actually, look at these. Make sure that they don't come apart, peel apart. This is a real deck of cards. In fact, it's my gift to you, and I thank you so very much. There it is. <laughs> That was phenomenal because I've seen a lot of card tricks, Thank you. but I've never seen one quite like that. Wasn't that out of this world? Well, thank you. Uh, you have a, a lot of interest in the history, magic, and the that have come before you. Absolutely. My apartment is like a mad scientist's lair of, of magic stuff. I have Houdini's straitjacket that he used and his handcuffs and like 4,000 books because it's my life. You know, I mean, this isn't just what I do here. I'm thinking about it and reading about it. Constantly. I'm assuming the uh, the straight jacket is on display. It's not used for like shades of grey moments at home, is it? No comment. <laughs> uh, so what was it? What kicked off your love of magic? My dad showed me a trick when I was eight years old and didn't tell me how it was done. And the not telling me how it was done part was, was what hooked me. And did he ever tell you? Never did, but I figured it out. So I had a little fool us and eight years old in my living room. I have my fingers crossed for you. Pen? The verdict. Okay. We see a lot of people come out here and do trick after trick after trick, just machine gun quality going through that we have trouble keeping track of. You did one clearly plotted trick. They used actually four methods that you had to you had to use to do that. Your cards from the very beginning were not shuffled and were not handled by Jonathan. And we also thought that the the move you had to do at the end was done absolutely beautifully. Just gorgeous, wonderful. Can and I had a wonderful me? time. Yes. So we're closer. Are you saying that something was switched or changed out? There there was there was one moment when something was switched. I'm try, not trying to say too much, but where something was switched. But there are four things that Teller can write down, and he will show them to you. So, Josh, if you take a look at what Teller's worked on. Hi, Teller. <laughs> that's... That's not, that's uh, not correct. Wow. Whoa, that's, well, that's not a pretty correct. major part of it. I think I can say without giving anything away, I absolutely did not do a deck switch. You did not do a deck switch? Well, then are we, I do know what you did do then. If you did not do a deck switch, then I think, and I, I didn't confer with Teller on this, but I think there's another way. I think you fooled us. That was the way you did it. If you didn't do a deck switch, Joshua, 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 Joshua,